I'm Lauren Queen Alexis. Love me. I know you do. And today, 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 we are going to be doing an army overview slash project overview of my Jean Stealer cult army. So I saw a lot of you requesting me to do the armies that I have here in my studio, which is my apartment. <laughs> it's a studio. But a lot of you have been requesting to see my entire forces. So I thought, why not start with the Jean Stealer cult since the past few weeks we have been focusing on them. Now, in these overviews, you are going to see a lot of unpainted models. So I do apologize about that, but it is what it is, and it is the, well, I'm working on these things. And this is why you actually see unpainted models in the battle reports themselves, is because I've been trying to finish them. So, without any further ado, let's talk about the army. So the Gene Stealer cult. They are a... Uh, there is there is a word that I could use to describe them that is very controversial today. They are a cult militia. They are um, liberators in their own right. They are religious zealots in another right. And they are a force that is infiltrating the Imperium. They are getting planets ready for the Great Devourer, their god, to come down and devour the planet. They believe that this is some sort of ascension, some sort of release from the mortal realm into their godhood. They want to bring them forth and get the planet ready for them as an offering to their gods. That being said, the hive mind itself knows the real reason. They want to get planets unprepared so the Tyranids can devour it very quickly and move on. So these little buggies want to do that. Anyway, the Tyranid Gene, the, the Gene Stealer cult is actually a very, very formidable army for anyone to actually fight. They have access to Gene Stealers, they have access to Imperial technology, and they have access to very, very skilled close combat units. The army focuses more like a glass cannon, and it's really reliant on luck. I'm not gonna lie, the army is not very reliable, there is a lot of luck factors playing in when you play the Gene Stealer Cult. That being said, I absolutely love the idea of sleeper agents in the Imperium just working against it while the Imperium themselves have to hunt them down and destroy them. And it, it's really cool to actually have like Death Watch versus Gene Stealer Cult because you get some really, really cool dynamics. Though on tabletop, the Death Watch would absolutely annihilate the Gene Stealer Cult unfortunately, depending on builds, of course, but it's still a cool dynamic. Sorry. Anyway, let's take a look at the actual army, and let's go through my thoughts, the growth of the army, and the actual paint scheme that I decided to go with. Quick little lore thing for my army itself. My Gene Silla cult is called the Illuminary Guard. They have infiltrated a guard unit and travel across the galaxy, infiltrating planets and bringing gene stealers as cargo along with them. They sneak them aboard uh, Imperial Navy vessels, infiltrating the vessels themselves and infiltrating the planet that they are getting on. They are bringing the light of their god to wherever they go. So their original planet of origin is a space station over Firekoth. Firekoth is a mm, rather polluted world where the people's skin has become so messed up that it is almost transparent. This applies to any skin tone or anything. You can see the veins and everything under their bodies or under their skin and the Gene Silicult has decided to make this their home. Some more lore about them. This is homebrew of course. Keep that in mind. While an investigation of an Ordo Hereticus unit went in, because of cult activity, mostly derived from a, well, religious zealot group that was on a planet, the planet being Firekoth, they discovered that the Gene Stealer cult may have been there. Knowing this, the Inquisitor in question, Inquisitor Lockwood, decided to call in the Ordo Xenos. The Ordo Xenos came in with a kill team of Death Watch to locate the main source of the, of the cult itself, 
and upon doing so has destroyed the patriarch of this cult without realizing that this Gene Sela cult has more than one patriarch. In fact, it has three at any one time. With the Death Watch's mission being successful, they decided to leave and leave it up to the Ordo, um, the Ordo Hereticus to clean it up. This was more of a rivalry between the two Inquisitors as the, the Inquisitors didn't really get along. There's a little bit of a fight in there. Anyway, seeing that the Ordo um, seeing that the Odo Xenos Inquisitor didn't actually get the job done, Rosalina Lockwood, the Inquisitor of Odo Hereticus, decided to take it upon herself and her acolyte team to destroy the space station to thus prevent the spread of the Gene Stealers and quarantine the planet. Now, this worked. This actually did work. They quarantined the world, nothing got in and out, the Gene Stealer cult was isolated which the Gene Sealer cult kind of wanted anyway. They were just like, all right, we'll take this planet. But little did they know that some pirates decided to raid the planet, going back and forth to the planet to steal its population, to steal its resources, to, you know, do pirate stuff, get loot, get out. Unfortunately, an orc warband decided to do this. A small freebooters decided to do this. And the Gene Sealer Call took this as the opportunity they needed to get off the planet. They infiltrated that ship, creating the Gene Team, or the, um, the Orcalite hybrids, and spread to the next part of the galaxy. The Orcs not realizing that, hey, we're being infiltrated, what the hell is happening? Uh, started killing off some of the Gene Sealers, but it already spread. Once they got to another world, the Gene Stealers got down to the planet and reset up a new cult, once again bringing the Illuminary Guard to that world. And this has been going on for countless years, and they've been grabbing every Imperial Navy vessel, every single army that they can find. They've been infiltrating, going to different worlds, setting up aboard their spaceships, as well as on the planets that they are going to, even going so far as to infiltrating the craft world. Anyway, guys, with that all said, let's take a look at this army and see the models themselves. So, as I said before, there's a lot of unpainted models in this army. Now, the reason for that is because, well, I'm getting to them. So, please forgive me. So, let's start off at the front with the HQs and characters. Right off the bat, we have two Acolyte Icon Wards standing next to a Primus and four um, Magoses, including a brand new Magos, the female Magos. I'm really excited to have her in my force. All of my Magoses are painted slightly differently. I've got to redo the base on this one. In front of them, they have all their Crouchling familiars, including the second edition one. Then, moving on, we have our two Kilomorphs. They have their six pistols. They are really cool. i got to do up his base soon. Next to him, we have the three Sanctuses with sniper rifles. Then, we have three Jackal Alphases on their crazy bikes. These are all looted bikes, and I really wanted to, you know, get the Space Marine Scout bikes and everything for this. Behind them, we have two Nexos, or however you pronounce it. These are custom built, as well as these, and these, and him. Yeah, that's pretty much it. These guys are really useful. I use one in almost every list now because their ability to just, well, get me back command points. Standing next to him, we have the Abominant, who I'm still rather disappointed with. Then we have um, that guy who's also right here, because I use these two as this guy. These are the uh, bodyguard units, whose names I'm drawing a blank at, and I'm probably going to pause my camera at some point, get their names, and come back. <laughs> but I forget their names. They're the, um, the assassin, the bodyguard on a 2+. Yeah, can't remember their names. Then we have the three patriarchs, Pinky, 
brain and this one whose name who doesn't have a name yet but we have three of them then we have three rock grinder transports the goliath truck transports i still need to paint this one up i really like these in game i think they're actually pretty efficient behind them we have two scout sentinels both armed with multi lasers one armed with a chain sword or chainsaw Then we have all of the neophytes. We have 60 neophytes armed with various weaponry and all sorts of other things there. Uh, actually, it's 50 neophytes and one Brood Brother squad. Brood Brothers are right in the middle. No, that's not really the middle. Pretend that that's the middle, okay? Because everything's going to be all right. You know, that song reference. Behind them, we have 60 Acolyte Hybrids. Technically 61. They are armed with various weapons, but for the most part, they're armed with hand flamers. Because, yes. There's a few rock saws in here now. I'm starting to realize that rock saws, rock saws are the way to go with a 10-man unit to make them even more devastating in close combat. I often overlook them, and now I kind of regret it. And then we have 20, 40, 50... Uh, there's two other gene stealers that are missing right now, but there are 50 gene stealers. Actually, wait, let's count this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 50 gene stealers in here. I really do like gene stealers. I feel that the cult's gene stealers are not that good uh, compared to the Tyranid gene stealers. I, I honestly don't know why. It just feels like the cult ones aren't as good. Mostly because the High Fleet Kraken Gene Stealers do get to reroll the charge distance, making them much better. Or 3d6 or something like that. They get the they get the Tyranid trait, which makes them better. And unlike that, in the Gene Stealer Cult Codex, they actually get no benefits aside from a few bubble effects. Also, if you haven't noticed, the High Fleet is based off of Kraken. The entire paint scheme is based off of Kraken. That is intentional. Then we have, whew, there's actually a lot more of these guys than are here because I have three more in the back, but there's 5, 10, 15, 20 of these guys. I don't know where I, I put the other three, but we have 10 with hammers, 10 with picks. Uh, we have three hypermorphs with hammers, or two with hammers and two with picks. That's what's missing. One of their arms broke off. Then, going over the back, we have a dev uh, Devastator Squad. They're pretty much Devastators. Actually, they're a lot worse than Devastators, but we have the Brood Brother Heavy Weapon Teams. We have a Laz Cannon Team, an Auto Cannon Team, a Heavy Bolter Team, two Mortar Teams. Then we have over here, there's supposed to be five of them. I don't know where I put the other one. But we have five uh, muties. That's their nickname that I've always given them. Then we have the unbuilt stuff, which is two of the jackal squads, two of the ridge runners, and a magos. That magos I'm probably gonna have custom made to have um, hair and everything and be me. And yes, there is a giant mat on the floor. I do apologize about that. I still have to roll that up and everything. But with that. That is a total of, hang on, I have my phone for this. I believe it to be, of course I closed out of Battlescribed just for this. That is a total of 5,000 points for my Gene Sealer Cult right now. Now, what I plan to add to this army, four more units of Akalyn Jackals, or Attilan Jackals, one more Ridge Runner, Okay, and that'll fill out the faster units. I want to get one more Scout Sentinel. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to get one more Scout Sentinel because I like the rule of threes. That's why I have three Goliath trucks. I don't really like the Rock Grinder variant. Um, I want to get another Primus. Uh, probably another two Primuses. Another Kilomorph. Another one of him, one more of them, 
because I like threes. I want to get two more abominants, again, because of threes. And that'll round out my jean silicone at around 6,000 points at max. That's what I'm thinking anyway. But this is what we have so far. We have 5,000 points. We have a ton of different options, but as you can see, the ones that are painted are what's appearing on the channel. And we don't have much painted just yet. So I've been working on this army quite a bit, and I want this army to be the one of the featured, um, one of my featured armies. So for me, I want Sisters of Battle, Space Marines, Custodians, and Jean Stillicult, and Tyranids. Those are the five armies that I really like to run. Actually, if you look over here, you can see some of the other armies, including my Imperial Knight household. And my Primaris Marines. And if you guys want videos on all of these things, you just have to say so. So I can go over like my Aeronautica, which includes three of these, three of these, one of that. Actually, it's two of these. Over here, we have my Custodians, Blackstone Fortress, really good game. My Tyranids, which are all up here. And yeah, I could do a video review for each one of these for what I have in the studio. If you guys want to see it, of course, you just need to comment in the comment section down below. What else would you like to see in the Jean Silicult? What else would you think I should add to the Jean Silicult? Or do you think at 6,000 points they're pretty efficient? Anyway, guys, I'm Alexis the Ego Queen. I love you guys. Oh, and be sure to check out all the links in the description down below. You can follow me on all sorts of social media, including Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, which you're on right now, um, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, you can check out my Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to help supporting the army, the armies, as well as the channel, as well as myself, because, well, I kind of need it. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm Alexis the Go Queen. I love you guys. Bye.